Now, this is a little song about a chap called Frederick. My girlfriend's got to know. They thought at first, this fellow's slick. They thought that he knew every trick. Alas, it wasn't so. No. Freddy's got a lot to learn. The ways of women he cannot discern. He hasn't got the talent to be a proper gallant. Diplomacy and tact he seems to spurn. When he takes a lady to her home, he'll tremble on the brink of the lady's doorstep, and he'll give a knowing wink. Yet if he goes up to have a drink, he'll simply have a drink. Freddy's got a lot to learn. Freddy very vainly tries to conquer every miss by telling the proverbial lies about its folly to be wise where ignorance is bliss. Freddy's got a lot to learn. The right to woo a girl he's yet to earn. It's really quite a scandal when he's flying round the candle. It's he and not the girl who gets the burn. When he asks the girl to dine, he says, we'll have a gorgeous time. He'll greet the bowing waiter with a smile that's quite sublime. Then he'll brush away the wine list and order gin and lime. Freddy's got a lot to learn. To a certain girl who liked him, his meanness gave a shock. They were sitting in a taxi and in a traffic block. And all the time he kissed her, he kept one eye on the clock. Freddy's got a lot to learn. He's got no conversation with a girl, but when they cling in semi-passionate embrace till she expects the ring, he tells he's a man's man, which may mean anything. Freddy's got a lot to learn. A girl went to her mother and cried with Fred, I'm through. The mother hugged her daughter and said, what's he do to you? She answered, it isn't what he does, it's what he doesn't do. Freddy's got a lot to learn. I think I should give you something of Freddy's background. He was born in 1912, and shortly afterwards his parents met by appointment to discuss his future. At four, he was sent to a kindergarten, a young home, where he was third in the egg and spoon race and looked after the little girls' dolls when they were playing rugger. At his proprietary school, he started Greek, but he never finished it. He could never remember the letters. He was better at French. He went from there to a most unpublic school where they had prefects and chums and the speech day and everything. He and the geometry master got sacked at the same time, and he drifted to London. Incidentally, the geometry master, who always hatted at an absurd angle, got a job at the BBC. Fred was quite good-looking, dressed well and danced well, so he was soon employed selling American cars on half commission. Instead of Frederick or Freddy, he called himself Fred, F-R-E-D, because someone told him once he was a typical four-letter man. He thought he ought to live up to it. Fred read lots of books, which he bought from chemist shops, but he never seemed to grasp anything, except other people's cigarettes. Nevertheless, he thinks he's the cat's pyjamas, but actually... He isn't even the mouse's brass here. Freddy's got a lot to learn. One day he'll find a female worm will turn. It's really rather dismal that his ignorance is abysmal. He's deserving of a strike upon the stern. He finally got married to someone mild and meek. But it's really most distressing to hear the cradle creak. They have a baby once a year on seven pounds a week. Freddy's got a lot to learn. He's so innocent, in fact, that he thinks pornography is a book on chess. Youth puts the act of loving as the foremost of ambitions. Both girl and boy both long to be in cuddlesome positions. They hear the older folks' advice in silence all with laughter and think but of the fearful joy they warned of sorrow after. And so through adolescence do they carefully learn the wee tricks practiced by the Gables, Coopers, Garbers and the Dietrichs. But what's the lot of anyone who's really a good lover? Dead, divorce, damnation, drink, so they will soon discover it's an overrated pastime after all. At a hectic Christmas party, you say, I beg your pardon, someone rather pretty, will you stroll out in the garden? Foolishly, she says she will, it may be just a whimsy, but off you go, your suit is thin, her dress is rather flimsy, and though the great adventure gives you something to remember, for what you've both forgotten is the time of year, December, when the doctor says, say 99, and listens to the wheezes, and asks you where you caught it, you'll admit between your sneezes, Achoo! it's an overrated pastime after all. You take a girl up motoring, a rather pretty lassie. You've got one arm around her and a cyclist is your chassis. Luckily he lands upon a bank where there's some grasses, says the beak upon the bench as he glares above his glasses. Did you see the man approaching, sir? Or were you busy courting? 
you say I didn't notice as the car and girl were sporting, the magistrate will answer. If of humor he's a dry sense, you'll agree when I find you, and of course endorse your license. It's an overrated pastime, after all. Perhaps one day you marry some young thing you find exquisite. Marriage isn't half as bad as people paint it, sir, or is it? For you'll find, although you row a bit, all stories have their morals. And the nicest part of married life is making up the quarrels. And then, a little later, a year or two it may be, you're going to be a parent to a male or female baby. But whether you're a soppy bloke or whether you're a cynic, you still will mutter as you pace the nursing home or clinic, it's an overrated pastime after all. You meet some girl in Aberdeen, the part is alcoholic. You won't see her again, you're sure, and so with love you frolic. Then someone asks her up to town to stay with them, quite greatest. They take her to a party, and of course you know what fate is. She goes and meets your wife, and perhaps mistakes her for your mother, and tells her what you've been to her, or much more than the brother. By the time your wife has told the truth and shattered her illusion, and started up proceedings, you will reach the same conclusion. It's an overrated pastime after all. It's an overrated pastime after all. Only too well realized by Rastus, who asked his boss for a ride. I gave you a ride a year ago, said the boss. Yes, sir, but my wife just had a new, new baby. Oh, Rastus, said the boss, you said if your wife had another baby, you'd kill yourself. Yes, yes, I did that, said Rastus. Uh, I took a rope into the stable, I tied it round a beam, I put a noose around my neck, I stood on a chair, I was just going to jump when I said to myself, I said, Rastus, you mustn't do it. You may be hanging the wrong man. Mm -hmm.